Hi, this is Aaron Brooker, field agronomist for Michigan and Northern Indiana. <clears throat> and as we hopefully prepare to get into some field work here, if things will dry out a little bit for us here in the next couple of weeks, I want to start thinking about some of the many challenges we face as those seeds get in the ground and think about the things that those seeds are up against as they try to produce us a profitable crop every fall. Now, throughout the season, I plan to send you information on some of the most common diseases, insects, and even some weeds that we deal with in any given year, some of the most common ones that we see in the area, to help you stay prepared as you advise your customers and see things in the field. So this isn't to replace any timely agronomic updates as specific problems arise within the field throughout the area. But again, I want to help you try to be more prepared as we see some of these common issues pop up in the field. So in each update, I will highlight uh, scouting, management keys, any environmental conditions, kind of the most important information for each of these pests. And I'll also include uh, links for more detailed information. I'll try to keep these kind of short and sweet each time, but uh, there will be more information available for each one of these. Now this week, I'm going to highlight some of our first threats that our crops face each season, and that's going to be seedling diseases. And the most common seedling diseases for our area are caused by fungal or fungal-like pathogens. And in most years, Phytophthora root and stem rot is going to be the seedling disease that poses the greatest risk of yield loss, and this disease affects soybeans only. There's also Pythium root rot, Rhizoctonia root rot, and Fusarium, and these can all infect corn and soybean seedlings. But these three are a little more sporadic and typically a little less common. Phytophthora uh, is typically the one we see the most frequently. As far as symptoms go, in general, we're going to look for seedlings that may be discolored, might be wilted or even rotted or completely dead. And a lot of times these occur in sections of one or two rows or maybe in patches throughout the field. In severe cases, we might be able to see these uh, become more widespread. Specifically to each of these diseases, Phytophthora is going to cause root lesions that cause rapid above ground yellowing, and that's gonna be followed by wilting and rot, and a lot of those plants may end up dying if it's severe. Pythium is going to cause rotted roots with water-soaked lesions, and it can actually look a little bit similar to Phytophthora. Sometimes we actually even need to send those into a lab to distinguish the two. Rhizoctonia is going to cause red sunken lesions on young plant stems, and those are going to develop into dry cankers that are going to end up girdling that stem in se severe infections and killing that plant. And then Fusarium, the roots are going to range from slightly discolored all the way to completely rotted. And again, any of these can cause plant death, and that's just going to depend on the severity of that infection. You can get anything from some wilting and some above ground symptoms all the way to that plant death with any of these. When we think about the environment for these, each of these pathogens, being that they're fungal or fungal-like, are going to require at least some amount of water to infect plants. Phytophthora, Pythium, and Fusarium are going to be common in compacted, poorly drained type of soils, while Rhizoctonia, though it does require some water to infect, it actually thrives in well-drained soils. You might find it on a well-drained uh, soil type or even on a hillside that doesn't have water sitting on it. It might be a common place to find Rhizoctonia. Moving right into management then, uh, seed treatments are going to be a very effective way to manage any of these diseases. And with Beck seed being all treated, uh, that's going to be our one of our main lines of defense against these. However, any seed treatment and any management practice is not bulletproof. If we plant early and these seeds just sit in the ground for a while, if we don't plant into very good conditions, and these seed treatments start to start to wear off over time, these these seed treatments can start to fail and we can see some issues here. But but generally, if we plant into good conditions and these seeds get off to a good start, we don't see a ton of issues. Also, planting when soils are warming and well drained, that kind of goes back to that seed treatment thing, but just getting these plants off to a good start and allowing them to just get in the soil, get the, the right temperature, get the water that they need, and just get up out of the ground and do well. And then 
When we think about the off season, we want to manage residue where these pathogens were present and they do overwinter in the residue. So uh, managing that residue somehow to try to reduce that pathogen load can be helpful. And then anything we can do to improve drainage or reduce compaction in some of those poorly drained areas of the field is going to help uh, prevent these diseases in the future as well. Now, hybrids and varieties are going to differ in genetic resistance to these diseases. One of the ones specifically that we'll talk about a lot and is in our product guide is going to be soybean tolerance to Phytophthora, as that is the most common seedling disease we deal with. So that's kind of the quick overview of this issue, and it's something we, we typically see at least in some fields every year. So keep an eye out for seedling diseases as we, as we start planting and as these seedlings start popping out of the ground. If you want to learn more about any of this, feel free to reach out to myself, and there will be an agronomy brief on seedling diseases attached as well. Thank you.